The Charlie Reimer Golf Show, starring Charlie Reimer. Hey, okay, let's pick up the tempo here. Charlie Reimer here, and welcome to my new show, where we do things my way. As a former golf pro and media personality, I know golf. But this isn't going to be your grandfather's golf show. I'm bringing you conversations with celebs and golf greats, getting off the course and out on the water, and even getting into some good eats. This is the Charlie Reimer Golf Show. Keep it in the fairway, folks. Today, in beautiful Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, I'm joined by one of the best golf instructors of all time, Hank Haney. I'm Charlie Reimer, and this is Riding with Reimer. Charlie, how you doing, bud? Great seeing you. Come on, give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Always great seeing you. We got a cool golf course for you, Polly's Plantation. You're going to love it. You're going to love it, too, because when you hang out with Hank, you get a lot of laughs, but you learn something as well. But how about the ride here? Well, this thing's pretty sweet. Hank, you got a, you got a little lifted. It's it's big like, like you. Big time, right? That's what they call you. <laughs> Let's roll. I mean, I feel like I'm special, like riding with Reimer. Is this kind of like carpool karaoke? I it's, mean, are you going to play? Yeah, like that. Are you going to like sing a song for me? Or? No, Charlie don't sing, Charlie don't dance. But this is the way I roll right here. I gotta, I gotta ask you. When did you decide you were going to be a teacher? Long time ago, man. When I was in college, you know, I played college golf at University of Tulsa. And I majored in education. I loved helping people. So yeah. I just said, you know what, I'm going to be a teacher. So I, I, I started teaching at the rec centers at the, in Tulsa. I taught, you know, for free, just so I could say that I had experience when I got done. Yeah. And I got my first job teaching. And then, you know, from there, it was, I met a lot of good people. When I met Mark O'Meara, and then everything changed for Hank Haney. Started teaching touring pros, and now, you know, Tiger was my last student. Now I'm back, you know, just spending all my all my time, you know, helping amateurs, really. And I know you spend a lot of time developing juniors, but one of the things that frustrates me about college golf now is they sign these kids so early, and they're not giving uh, late bloomers a chance at that's all. That's good. That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I mean, it just depends, though. I mean, what school, the top ten schools or whatever. I mean, they're after all the best players, but the, the rest of the schools are trying to find those late bloomers. You're trying to find that, yeah. you know, that guy that can turn into something, you know, that everybody wants to tell you that they're that guy. But, you know, in golf, the great thing about golf is you just, you got to shoot the score. I mean, I coached college golf for five years. I know what it was like, you know, and it's, it's tough getting players. That's why they're signing them earlier and earlier. He's no spring chicken. <laughs> he got a six and a half year old son, yeah. Henry. Yeah. How has that changed your life? Oh, my God. I tell you what, when you have a six-year-old that keeps me young, when I coached on the tour, I spent, you know, 200 days a year traveling. Yeah. But now, I, you know, I've got time, and I spend it with, with my son, and, you know, he's my student. I coach him on, you know, life, really. So I love it. It's been just incredible. How long is this hole? <clears throat> we got about 115 yards. I always tell kids to use a tee, but... I'm too lazy. A tough hole. I mean, like, how's the average fellow play this hole? I would say there's a lot of golf balls out there, Hank. <laughs> Greens look awesome. 287 pounds, and I can't get it to the hole. <laughs> That's what's called dead center, too. So one of the things I want to ask you about is, is um, when you walk up on a tee and you're talking to a player, it's like it's like well, I listen to a four-star general talk. Yeah. When you're talking to a player, it's like, yes, sir, I'm going to do that. How do you get to that point? Some of it is 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 just the way you convey your message, the confidence that you give it, and people can sense that right away, whether or not you actually really you know, are kind of guessing or you 100% know what, what you're talking about. Yeah. And that's the, you know, that's the advantage that more experienced teachers have. Um, and that's a lot of times why they get better results. Yeah. Yeah. What would you have done if you hadn't have been Hank Haney? I would have coached something, you know, I mean, I, I because the thing is, is I just like helping people. 
I mean, I just, I just love it. I mean, it's just, it's just what gets me going. It's what I just like to do. It's just, it's so much fun to help people, no matter what you're helping them with. I'm a coach, you know, I mean, just the fact that golf is my subject, but I can coach anything. It just takes me a little while to learn the subject. Once I learn the, the subject matter, then I can, I can go. Uh, and you know, you're, if you're a coach, you're a coach. So I, there, I'd be coaching something. I just, I love passionate golfers. Mm -hmm. Like with coaching, I, you know, everybody says, Hank, you like working with better players? I mean, I like working with anybody. I mean, to me, they're all just students. I'm gonna see if I can peel the paint off of that 150 pole. Tell them the truth, Hank, where'd that ball go? I mean, you peeled some paint, but maybe. <laughs> I feel some pain off the house. <laughs> Golf course is beautiful. We had a great day. Great day. It's a nice little four. You hit some good putts. Well, Hank, I appreciate you uh, coming out and spending a little bit of time with me. Always a pleasure hanging out with you. My pleasure. I had a blast riding with Reimer. <laughs> Up next. More golf and laughs on the Charlie Reimer Golf Show. All right, folks, welcome in to the Charlie Reimer Podcast. And I got to tell you what, folks, superintendents, they're out there a lot earlier than 9 o'clock. And we absolutely could not enjoy the golf courses the way we do if it wasn't for the hard work that our superintendents and their staffs do. And right now, I'm thrilled to be joined by one of the best in the business, uh, Jim Huntoon. Jim, appreciate you taking the time to uh, join me on uh, on a podcast today. Absolutely, Charlie. It's my pleasure. I'm convinced that you and your side of the business don't get the respect you deserve because most of your work is done before most of the golfers actually get to the golf course. Is that is that a pretty good observation? It is. I mean, we try to get as much done ahead of play as possible. Um, you know, we're more efficient that way between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. to get as much possibly done before the golfers are out there. Jim, we've got so many <clears throat> new people coming to the game that they, they don't really understand what their responsibilities are as a golfer to leave that golf course as good as they found it for them. What are the responsibilities that, that you think golfers need to take on uh, to properly take care of a golf course and help you and, and your staff uh, keep the golf course in great shape? I would say even take it up a level from there, Charlie, leave it in a better place than it was when you found it. You yep. know, if that includes, you know, fixing your ball mark or fixing other ball marks. That's my number one pet peeve. I, I view it as damage that you make to the golf course, your responsibility as a golfer to repair that ball mark. How long, if, if nobody repairs that, how long before that, that turf is back in good shape again? In the fall and the winter, Charlie, right now, it could be months. Mm. You know, in the summertime, when the grass is actively growing, maybe two weeks. Off the top of your head, what, what would you tell someone that's new to the game? How would you tell them to properly repair a fresh ball mark? Well, you want to push the indentations in. You don't really want to lift up and tear anything. You want to push, and then really, after you push everything forward, just tap it down with your putter. And even if there is a slight indentation there, that's sometimes better than going in there and prying it up and tearing. I want to talk to you a little bit about chemical applications on golf courses. Uh, the environmental impact on a golf course is that something that, that people should be concerned about? No, in most cases not. You know, the, the chemicals that we're using today are, are not like the ones 30 years ago, 50 years ago. They're much more target specific. They're much safer. And our chemical companies have worked really hard, Charlie, to develop new products that are safe on the environment, effective for what we need to do to make golf as environmentally safe as possible. And it is because part of playing golf, the enjoyment that I get from it, and I know a lot of others is being in the natural environment. For the green industry, golf's on the forefront of environmental stewardship. I'm seeing a lot of information, Jim, that uh, indicates to me that a, a golf course, because it's maintained and it's fertilized, the number of plants per square acre it is even greater than what you might see if that same amount of land was in a natural state. Do you agree with that, or have you seen any information indicating that? Absolutely. You know, one acre of turf grass, Charlie, releases so much more oxygen than an acre of trees. Um, I mean, the trees are great, but turf 
per square inch releases more oxygen into the atmosphere than any other type of plant material. And, you know, a lot of these golf courses are important green spaces in urban areas and other areas. And that's why I think it's important to maintain some of these golf courses. They're in high densely populated areas because they do provide green space, you know, habitat for wildlife and just allow people to get out in fresh air and, and recreate. Well, Jim, thanks uh, for your time. And we very much appreciate, even though we don't get a chance to tell you very often because you work early in the morning, the great work that you and other superintendents all across the country do. Thank you, Charlie. I appreciate it. I appreciate everything you do to grow the game. And I agree with you completely. You know, etiquette and decorum in golf is just as important as the rules governing play. I believe that's what Mr. Bobby Jones said way back in the day, and he's right. Well. Great time, Jim, and it's the first time, folks, I've ever got a superintendent to agree with me on anything, so I'm having a good day. I hope you are, too. For the full interview, go to PlayGolfMyrtleBeach.com. We'll be right back. In the meantime, check out Southwest Airlines. Did you know even golf bags fly free? Golfers, <laughs> we're different. <laughs> we aren't afraid to go for it. <laughs> wow. We're dedicated. Let's see it. <laughs> and we never stop. Guys, Not every on. place gets us, but one does. Myrtle Beach, 78 courses, 60 miles of beach. You could say we were made for each other. The beach gets golfers. Golfers get the beach. Book your Myrtle Beach golf getaway today. Hi, Charlie. How are you doing today? Hey, John. Yeah, doing great. Thank you. So what are we having for lunch? Well, Jonna, I'm gonna have some sweet tea and one Charlie out of his element. What in the heck is Charlie out of the element? I'm glad you asked. So I got this show and my producer and knuckleheads on the crew, they like doing this segment where they sort of get me off balance. And I think they're trying to embarrass me is what I think. But they know that I'm really good at getting served, but they don't think I got any chance of being a server. So, will you train me up? I can give it a shot. All right, I'll take that as oh, a okay, yes. Well, let's come go. on, let's go. All right, cool. Uh -huh. All right, here we go. All right, Charlie, this is our uh, memory boot camp. So we're going to, I'm gonna give you some orders and you need to memorize them and call them back to me as soon as I give you the four orders. Oh, OK. I, oh, OK? I got So I'm, I, I'm I got going that. to. Yeah, go, I got that. So we've got a party of three. One guy orders a Fazio burger, no lettuce, no tomato, pepper jack cheese, and he got would like onion your salad. Hold the artichoke hearts, no Our olives. Person. Has a Philly steak, no mushrooms, no onions, no peppers. One with pepper has jack ordered cheese a Fazio like cheeseburger with fries. Is there like a. Um, like a trick that you use for this? Because this is hard. No, it's not that hard. You just listen and comprehend. What? I'm sorry, what? So we get to load them up now. All right, here I we go. I love this. This is 101 carrying your tray. Awesome. So I've how never much do you done think you that. Can oh, you carry? can bring it. Yeah, keep going. Okay. Keep awesome. going. That's going to be awesome. All right. Yeah, I got it. I'm not even stressing yet. Are okay, you one, sure? more, one more, one more. Okay, I'm gonna one do more. two more. Okay, two more. Okay. Can I like put it on my head? Absolutely I, not. Are Come you on sure? Now. We're not gonna do that. <laughs> I tell you what. I can do it. I can do what it. What might be best for you? I could carry that on no. my head. Let's just take these. Okay. How's that? Okay. Can I? You gotta hold them up high. Can you like, hold it up high like that. Like this. You, yeah. Okay. How am I doing? Am I doing good? That's it. That's good. Don't okay. drop it. Don't drop okay. it. Okay. All right. You see All right, it? You look see where you're going. Look where. Charlie. I got it. I got this, John. <laughs> I got it. Hi, ladies. How are you doing today? Thank you. Great. Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, this is Charlie. He Hi. is in training today. He's going to be taking your order. I see that you've already uh, got your cocktail beverages. So I'm just going to leave Charlie to you. So good luck. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you. Is she gone? Oh, good. <laughs> How y'all doing? Let's talk about lunch. <laughs> what are we going to have? What are we going to have? I'm going to get um, the Baja cup. I'm going to have the classic cup. OK. What are we doing on the dressing, ladies? 
Um, I think I'm gonna have ranch dressing. Ranch dressing. And mine comes with the spicy chipotle dressing. Right, okay, anything else I can do for you ladies today? Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, if Jonna comes back, will you tell her I did great? I sure and will. And above everything, tell her that I did not sit down with you, Absolutely. okay? Woo, all right, we'll see y'all later. <laughs> ladies, I got your lunch. You're gonna love this. I've got your chili. We put a little extra cheese in there. I've got your fruit. And then the grits that you were gonna split, we put a little cheese in there for you too. Any questions, anything else I can get for you? This isn't what we ordered. They're not very good at this. It's a lot harder than it looks. A lot harder than it looks. Fine, I'll eat it then. So, Jonna, I came in today, and I ordered the Charlie out of his element, and you sure delivered. I hope I never get that order again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being such a great sport here today at Barefoot. Well, I like a good challenge, and you are you're, you were one of the best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Nothing beats golf in Myrtle Beach. I'm showing off and playing some of our best courses all while giving you some advice for your game. This is Charlie's Golf Tips. So this is basically a par four that I'm gonna turn into two par threes. You gotta do a little homework here, and you gotta be honest about how far you carry the golf ball. And when I look down this fairway, the first thing that I see is this bunker that's basically in the middle of the fairway, and that bunker is 210 yards to carry. And then the next thing I see is the penalty area through the fairway, and I'm 275 yards to there. Now, I'm pretty honest with myself in how far that I carry each club in my bag, and maybe you ought to do a little bit of work on that. All you gotta do is pace it off, grab a laser, GPS. You can figure out how far you carry every club in your bag. You just gotta work at it a little bit, and even write it down, make a little chart. There's nothing wrong with that. A lot of times, caddies will have a chart in the back of the yardage book that they carry just to make sure that they have their players carry yardages down. My five wood carries 235 yards. I'm really confident it's not gonna go to the penalty area long, and I'm really confident I can carry that bunker. Let's see what we get. I think that's gonna be right in the sweet spot. I gotta tell you, the 16th hole, the green, it's awfully skinny. And when I see a green that's this small, what you gotta do is completely ignore that flag stick. I'm trying to put the ball in the middle of the green. I'm about 190 yards to that flag. 185 is easily the middle of the green. I'm looking at the fattest part, I'm not trying to do anything fancy here. I just wanna get it on the green. If I get myself 20, 30, 40 foot putt, I'll be happy. Now, when I look at this lie, the uh, fairways are super tight, and I know a lot of people worry when the fairways are this tight, they, they worry about solid contact. They can sort of hit everything a little bit thin. And I've always found the best tip to remember for getting solid contact with your irons really, really easy. Ball and then divot. You wanna hit the ball and then the divot. All right, so I'm going middle of the green. I'm thinking ball and then divot. And let's see how we do. That's a little bit left of the green. No problem there. I can get up and down from there all day long and sometimes on Tuesdays. That didn't make any sense, but it sounded really cool, didn't it? <laughs> I love this one. This is a really cool pitch right here. It looks pretty simple, but let me walk you through what's going on here. If I try and run this ball through this fringe right here, it's gonna kill it and the ball's gonna end up short and right. If I try to carry it all the way to the hole, I'm landing on a real severe downslope and it's gonna shoot it really hard to the right. So what I've gotta do is I've gotta find a spot to pitch to. In this case, that spot is right around in here. So my focus becomes that spot and not the flag stick. 
I'm gonna use my 55 degree sand wedge and I'm just sort of reading this lie and trying to think how can I land it in that spot right there. And the one tip I want you to think of, this comes from my good buddy, Stan Utley, who's an amazing short game coach. At impact, I want the club vertical. So many people make the mistake of coming in and leading with that handle. That's not the kind of play that you need here. I want true loft. At impact, I want that shaft vertical, standing straight up and down. All right, my focus goes to that spot. At this point, it's just sort of like throwing a ball right there. That'll work just fine. Four at 16 at Glen Dorna is always a good score. These are tough times on many levels. The best thing we can do for ourselves is listen to other people. And there's no better place to do that than on a golf course. Make it a point to start a conversation with someone new. Ask about them. Everybody's got a story to tell. And if you do, I bet you learn something and make a new friend. Hope you enjoyed the Charlie Reimer Golf Show and keep it in the fairway, folks. Was that me? I bet that's a horn. You gotta figure out this cart. I mean, you got, yeah, there you go. You got the brand new cart. You got, a, you got a little lifted. It's it's big like like you. You're calling me fat right no, off the no, bat. You're big, you're big time. <laughs> I mean, you're pretty scrawny now. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're both fitting here, in here pretty good, though. If you average us both out. Yeah, we're, we got an average <laughs> payload here. <laughs>